And it's Ken Kratzer for CBSI Services and the Hudson Valley Direct Marketing Club in Greenwich, Connecticut. At our lunch, had a nice panel discussion about using different channels to get the message out for for uh, companies, reach new customers. Had a chance to hear from Elena Sofko from Chicken Soup for the Soul. And Elena, great to see you. First, tell us a little bit about uh, your company, Chicken Soup for the Soul. Very famous. That's right. I think a lot of people will remember our books, and we are continuing to produce uh, and publish our books about 10 a year. But a couple of years ago, the parent company decided to create an entertainment studio uh, in, in part to participate in the disruption in media. Uh, we want to be able to tell our stories uh, from a video standpoint, and we'd like to be able to um, control distribution outside of what is typical today, because we are seeing rapid changes in the media industry and we knew we had a good opportunity to take advantage of the natural disruption happening with cord cutters and the like by going out on our own and being our own, um, building our own video consumption ecosystem. Very good. Obviously, chicken soup uh, for the soul, a famous line of traditional hard, co hard cover books. And uh, now, how has it gone from a traditional uh, a publishing of books to uh, 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 to offering that material, that content in different ways. What have been some of the changes? There are a range of different kinds of um, platforms, uh, a lot of digital ones that are new and different ways where we can use existing platforms like cable television or VOD from a cable head end or just VOD in general across a number of different platforms. And so we've been able to take advantage of all of the social media platforms like Facebook and Instagram, Instagram and Pinterest to be able to share interest in our content or the video videos themselves, whether it's promo or actual content or even um, like an article from the website that we co-own with the actor. Dr. Ashton Kutcher, aplus.com. And you mentioned a point that that I I, I felt uh, and uh, one of my projects that uh, uh, distribution on Facebook has changed. Uh, the amount of people you reach has changed versus a couple of years ago. Why is that? And, and what are some of the ways that you can compensate for uh, that that loss of distribution uh, uh, in this change that Facebook has made? There's always a risk when you put all your eggs in one basket, one platform that you don't control yourself. And in this case, the management team at Facebook made a conscious decision to be able to improve the engagement pet metrics of its users that had been sort of weakening over time um, based on how much uh, content that was surfacing through people's uh, everyday timelines uh, that doesn't come from their friends and family, but our articles and politics and other things. And so they made a conscious decision to start to uh, pull a lot of that out uh, uh, of your content, of the content that a person would normally see in their timeline and replace it with more content from their friends and their family. I think they did do a pushed message to its users to say, hey, we're making it more fun. We're making it um, better for you and more relevant for you. And for those of us that had been using that platform to shore up or create or deliver a business that all of a sudden became a big challenge and without a whole lot of warning. So given that that has happened and we did definitely definitely feel an impact like most news organizations and our aplus.com property is a news organization. We felt it quite profoundly. Uh, all areas of our business that had some dependency on Facebook felt it in some area of the business. And so on the one hand, sort of um, not allowing most of your business to happen on one platform you don't control directly is one way to mitigate that kind of risk. Uh, and the other is to sort of spread your um, uh, energy into other areas that have a better rate of return. We find better quality traffic comes from an investment in search engine optimization, for example, uh, using other platforms to reach different kinds of audiences with different kinds of user experiences makes sense. We use Instagram, for example, a slightly younger audience there than on the Facebook platform. Platform. And so it's really a matter of, um, you know, tweaking your marketing mix like any other, you know, non-digital product would be is sort of, you know, evaluate what you have, how well it's working for you. And again, if you don't control that platform yourself, I wouldn't put all my eggs there. <laughs> And we've had uh, been at a couple of sessions with print companies uh, who are looking at the spots where digital printing makes a big difference, where people still like to read a hard copy book. What, what are some of the dynamics about whether people would rather read material hard copy or rather read something like an ebook or uh, uh, something that comes uh, might be on a blog? 
interestingly enough, I think that on our publishing side of the business, there has been some success with respect to using email and sharing a story a day uh, to keep people engaged on a day-to-day -day basis between book purchases. We find that a lot of our books are, are purchased as gifts, and gifting an e-book isn't yet the kind of really good gifting experience that we would want it to be. So we find that a lot of our book purchases end up becoming paper books. That said, there's a large swath of consumers uh, all over the world and not just in the U.S. that are very happy to receive a story a day in a newsletter or to start to subscribe to more than that or even an all-you-can-eat where you can just go through and look for the kind of story that you think will float your boat that day and read that one. Interesting point. I think my friend Joe Connolly is going to be interested in that one. Uh, tell us a little bit about You've had an interesting career. You've been with some interesting uh, prominent uh, media companies. Tell us, tell us a little bit about the path of your business career. Oh, sure. Um, early in my career, I worked for a division of News Corporation that's now known as News America Marketing. It started as an in-store marketing company for me uh, uh, that produced the radio show in the grocery store, Point of Purchase Radio, Pop Radio, which was... Um, Acquired one day by a company that was once known as Act Media that was acquired by News Corporation. They had a division that did FSI uh, newspaper inserts with coupons and that fit very nicely with the Act Media portfolio. So eight years of my career actually has been producing the radio show in the grocery store, the drug, sh drug store. Um, I left there to be one of the first employees at the company now known as Sirius XM. I uh, was number, employee number seven. I programmed all of the non-music content and I uh, negotiated very innovative content licenses for full channels in mo by and large. Uh, I did some of the first play-by-play um, -play deals with um, the NHL, the NBA, and other, other sports leagues, uh, news, and other kinds of entertainment content and started their ad sales. I left there in 2003, a year after service launch. So I started at Sirius in 99. 98, I'm sorry. Um, in 2003, I shifted over to A&E Television Networks um, and started uh, unwittingly, actually. It wasn't deliberate, but it is what happened. I started their digital business uh, for them before leaving that company uh, for Nokia, the cell phone manufacturer based in Finland. Um, I started at Nokia six months before Apple released the first iPhone. And on that day, six months after I started at Nokia, the world really changed for anyone in mobile. Um, and my role shifted, and I ended up working on the global content strategy in support of the launch of its mobile app store. Uh, after that, I spent 18 months at ESPN, um, where I led in a technology innovation uh, think tank and investment uh, arm of the company, and left there for uh, a few um, year and a half later for WWE, where I had a range of digital responsibilities, including international digital distribution and products, uh, where we launched websites for WWE in a multiple languages um, based in sites in uh, country-based offices that we were helping op the company open. So we launched an Arabic website, a German website, Polish website, etc., cetera, um, and left there two years ago to join Chicken Soup for the Soul and start their entertainment studio. Elena well, Sofka, I can tell you've got some background in radio. <laughs> Great to hear uh, your comments today and your uh, participation in the panel here at the Hudson Valley Direct Marketing Club. Uh, great to have you with us today. Thank you for having me. Our pleasure. This is Ken Kratzer for CVSI Services and Hudson Valley Direct Marketing Club in Greenwich, Connecticut.